we're starting with two very key presentations. The one presentation, or the first one, will be delivered by Madame Nangula Wanja uh, from the NIPDP, followed by Mr. James Newpe. And I'd like to ask both of them to come up on stage right now um, because the president very adequately and very eloquently said, uh, talked a lot about partnership. I think we've heard the notion of partnership, the value of partnership, quite a few times here this morning. And obviously, this is something that, as Namibians, we know very well at home because we know that to be true, both from the Harambe Prosperity Plan 1 and 2, where the ethos is no Namibian shall be left out. So the two Namibians who will not be left out this morning and who will address us, um, they're making their way to the front um, to, to come and address us, because in Africa, we say that if you want to go fast, you go alone, but if you want to go far, you go together. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, together, but first Nangula will have the opportunity to address us. Can we have the video? play on Namibia, and then Angola will take the stage. Thank you. Welcome to Namibia in uh, Brussels. So I thought I must just bring you a piece of Namibia, and you have not seen a lot of it yet. If you have not yet been to Namibia, please join us in Namibia, and you will see much more. Namibia is a country of diversity, and I think that is what is demonstrated by that video. When I saw it, I could not help but share it with as many people as possible. I know that the quality is probably not what you like to see, but hopefully the message has landed that Namibia is a country of diversity. And it is that diversity that, yes, we are celebrating today. It is that diversity that we will demonstrate throughout the two days of engagement. It is that diversity that we believe will help us as Namibia and Namibians to overcome the challenges that we are facing and our people are, ch are facing today and to turn our economy around and to bring about economic growth, economic development, employment opportunities, and much more for our people. And of course, it's that diversity that we are inviting the business people in the community today to partner with us and other countries to partner with us so that together we can make a difference in the world. I was asked to do a few minutes of presentation. The diversity we celebrate is when we talk about energy, for example, we know that, yes, there are many sources of energy, but Namibia is so blessed that at this stage we are talking about possibly almost being able to power the world from all forms of energy. If yours is nuclear, we are the third largest producer of uranium in the world. If yours is oil, we have just found oil and gas in Namibia. If yours is uh, biomass related, we have got, uh, we are a potential producer of biomass. And yes, if you are green that we are talking about today, then we will demonstrate why Namibia uh, has the potential to partner with you in greening your country or your economy. And of course, we are not only an energy uh, rich country, we are also a country that is rich in minerals. We'll have that conversation. We are a country that is rich in terms of agriculture. Yes, you have seen the desert, but you have also seen that we do have some water all around the country. So we, like the, His Excellency has indicated, we are a country that is able to produce and export dates, grapes, and various other agricultural products. And yes, we are a country that is so beautiful that uh, somebody asked me a question, if I visit Namibia, what is the attraction for tourism? And I said, uh, I think it's our diversity, and I think I cannot say much more than the video has said. So Your Excellency, thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for introducing remarkable and beautiful Namibia. And thank you very much to the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, to our First Lady, 
to our honorable ministers, to the ambassadors that are with us today, to the business community, and uh, to my colleague James, who is with me here, to Hilda, who has welcomed us. Let us spend these two days talking about Namibia and our diverse country and how we can work together to make sure that diversity benefits the Namibian people and the world. So yes, our priority sectors are indicated there, and they also talk to the diversity of Namibia. But today we are here to talk about minerals or materials, spe specifically critical raw materials, and we are here to talk about energy. When it comes to mining, mining has always been the cornerstone or has been the foundation and the core of the Namibian economy. It continues to contribute significantly to our GDP, contribute significantly to our treasury, contribute significantly to employment creation, as well as to foreign exchange earnings. And it looks like it will continue to play a significant role in Namibia. We can see the diverse resources of Namibia. I will not be able to go through everything. Uh, we can see, yes, diamonds there. Recently, we celebrated Namibia as being now in the top 10 countries in terms of not only values, but also in terms of volumes. Uh, because we are a country that is rich in diamonds, especially that are gem quality diamonds mined at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And beside diamonds, uranium, I've talked about copper, and like His Excellency has mentioned, we have got quite a number of critical raw materials that are needed in energy transition. According to the International Energy Agency, getting to net zero will require a six-fold increase in mineral output by 2040. And some of those minerals like lithium, they will see probably an increase or growth that is requirement, required for about 40 times over. And therefore, as we have this conversation, we have to understand the urgency to come up with projects and the agency to deliver on those projects. Yes, critical raw minerals, and when we say lithium at the spotlight, the increased demand is real. Gigafactories are being thought about everywhere, and therefore we will need to come up with significant, significant and substantial supply. When it comes to energy, we know that energy and uh, uh, my minerals are interrelated because we do need energy in order to process materials and to refine, but we also do need uh, materials in order to satisfy the energy transition. Namibia is again blessed with, uh, like I indicated earlier, really a diverse source of energy. And we are talking about green energy today and the world-class solar and wind resources that Namibia has, as well as the potential to produce green hydrogen at very competitive rates, is really what we are celebrating, and it's what will enable us to, con to make a difference and, 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 and uh, to contribute to energy transition. I am excited at the projects that we will showcase throughout the two days. Of course, the question has been said, Will we see green colonization or will there be local use? So of course it is Namibia first. In terms of using uh, green uh, hydrogen and its derivatives, we, will, we are looking forward to the green industrialization. Namibia has got an industrialization policy. We have talked about value addition for many years. And therefore, as His Excellency has said, we are looking forward to processing, refining, and going as far as we can in the value chain of critical raw materials and other minerals. And in terms of mobility, you have seen that Namibia is a huge country. So if we are going to talk about greening our own economy, probably uh, e, uh, EVs will work, but the long distances that we have will probably require us to have green hydrogen and its derivatives as the new fuel or the new um, energy for transportation. And then agriculture, we're talking about fertilizer, excess water, and various other components that will help us to fuel our agricultural sector. Electrification, yes, in Namibia, our, we have got low level of electrification. 
And we will definitely see benefit coming from green hydrogen projects from excess electricity. And then Brian will help us to diversify further into various sectors. Sectors such as, of course, more into agricultural sectors, chemicals, and then even some metals that I'm sure that many universities are looking at the R&D of which materials can we get from brine. If we do one or two spotlight of the projects we will see, we have got a project called Green Iron, uh, that uh, really high iron from uh, green iron steel. And this project uh, had already come up with their prototype. It was launched and they are busy going to have their launch or groundbreaking ceremony in Namibia in November, and we will see the first project in Namibia that will be producing green iron. Then we talk about agriculture, and we are already working with uh, Dares Green Hydrogen, a small village that is really trying to use energy to become green as a whole village. And then we have heard that on the 28th of September, we have launched or had had a groundbreak breaking ceremony for Cleanergy, which is a consortium between one of our local companies, ONL, and CMB Tech. And they are talking about building the first refueling, green hydrogen refueling station. So we have got projects that have groundbreaking projects that are starting to work, and we see many others that are having a number of conversations. And then, of course, if we talk about energy poverty, it's our contribution to the region. We already have the SAPP, and we will see Namibia seeing how can we contribute to the SAPP. And beyond SADC to Africa and the rest of the world, our president always says no one should feel left out. So please, Europe, you are not left out. You are part of this strategy. So we will definitely look forward to exporting green hydrogen, green ammonia, various derivatives to Europe, to Japan, to Korea. Those are specifically countries that we have partnered with. And therefore, we believe that there is a lot in Namibia to share. And if you are a company here, you will be in good company. Those are the companies that are already working on the ground and their projects are on the ground, either groundbreaking or prototyping or something, in, whether it is in green hydrogen, whether it is in critical raw materials. Those are some of the countries that have either shown significant interest, have partnered in some of the RFP, or are already also on the ground, already acquiring land and starting the processes. So you are welcome. As I'm coming to a close, let's look at what is the missing link and how can we get good partnership? Yes, we must not forget that whatever we are talking about, we are definitely looking at uh, that economic active Namibians, how many of them are employed, and of those employed, most of them are in informal sector. We want to formalize those sector. Those manufacturing jobs and mining and agriculture we definitely want to do much more than doubling them. And that is the picture we, will we should not forget and we should not lose sight of. So the missing link is skills. Skills for trade and economic diversification, uh, capability for R&D. With a bit of research I was doing recently is that whether it's government or private sector in Namibia, we are not making significant investment in R&D and we will want to do more. And then infrastructure into uh, financing rail, port, the grid. We know that there's many electricity and many power projects that are standing at our door, but grid connection because of infrastructure sometimes is a challenge and therefore we will need partners who will help us with blended capital or blended financing that will enable us to uh, get that infrastructure working. So why Namibia? Fraser says we are number one in geological data and actually doing excellent in many, many other areas. Yes, we are forming good partnerships. The government says they are here to be enabler. Government has done its part. Policy, we have said, uh, in terms of partnerships, we have formed partnerships. And uh, we have uh, established ourselves as a country that is doing well in FDI. 
our currency is convertible. We have got experiences in dispute pro uh, protection or resolution. We operate by a rule of law, protection of human rights. Uh, so the list is long. Those are just the few I can fit on that one page for the letters to still be readable. Uh, otherwise, it will become longer and longer. If nothing else, this I, co I am co quoting this one from our first lady at a, a, a place where she was interviewed re recently, and I was there, and they asked, why should we invest in Namibia? And you've got like one second. And her answer was, I do not, you know, like Namibia, we will definitely double our GDP in the next 10 years or so. I do not know any other country that will boast the same. If you cannot partner with a country that is bold enough to say we will double our GDP, then I don't know who you will partner with. So if you want to grow your business, Namibia is probably the country that you would like to be with. So please be part of this exciting journey with us. And those are various Namibians that you can contact if you would like to hear more. And if any of them do not answer you, my email address is also there. <laughs> Thank you.